This is I Hear Things for Friday, April 29th. I'm Tom Webster. This episode is called Roll With The Changes. So I'm going to start with a quick note about Spotify's stock performance yesterday and the fallout from that, and then a bit of personal news that, I don't know, might interest you. Yesterday, after Spotify's earnings call, and there was a great uh, piece on this from Ashley Carmen in Bloomberg, I saw a lot of discussion about Spotify's investments in the podcasting space. Now, clearly, those investments have had an impact on profit margins, which stayed flat relative to the previous quarter. And flat was not good. Analysts were disappointed by this. They expected the profit margins and the gross margins to get better. So the stock was was punished pretty severely. In fact, it ended trading yesterday, April 28th, pretty much around its all-time low. It ended around 96 bucks, and it's it was as high as 305 uh, within the last year. So yeah, it got slammed a bit. Now, I've seen some hot takes on this, mostly by investment analysts. And I have just one hot take on this. America's infatuation with quarterly earnings reports does not benefit anyone doesn't benefit stakeholders, and it doesn't benefit shareholders. After flirting with quarterly reporting themselves, the EU and Great Britain both have gone back to semi-annual reports, which is a little better, I think. The only thing that quarterly reporting does is encourage short-term thinking. And it's that kind of thinking that makes analysts who get paid by companies that make money on transactions issue statements that encourage transactions as we saw yesterday. Now, I'm concerned about all of that, and not because I'm rooting for Spotify in particular. I don't think I'm rooting for any specific company over another in podcasting. And I'm sure as heck not rooting against anyone, including Spotify. Spotify has cast a great shadow over the podcasting space. It's made some of the biggest moves. It's locked up some of the biggest shows. And alarmingly for some, it's been the biggest mover in sequestering at least a part of the podcasting space into a closed system. Now, I'm a big believer in open podcasting, which I see as the strongest path to unlocking the incredible revenue potential of podcast advertising. But I also believe in avoiding false choices, and I also believe in embracing the fact that podcasting will and must support multiple revenue models. There are multiple paths to success here, just like TV and digital video have. I want the market for open RSS-driven podcasting to grow, but that doesn't mean Spotify has to shrink. Rooting for the failure of one of podcasting's biggest companies is not a sane choice if you're staking your future on podcasting. Now, ultimately, you either believe that Spotify's investments will pay off in the long term, or they won't. In the short term, we've seen the results. These investments haven't paid off yet. We're not really going to know if Spotify overpaid for acquisitions for a long time, certainly longer than a quarter. I mean, if you look at the performance of this pokey little stock called Amazon, it was a penny stock for about a decade. And now, of course, it's a multi-thousand dollar stock. Now, I'm not saying that Spotify will enjoy the same kind of success as Amazon, but I would remind everyone in podcasting what the ramifications of failure might be to the rest of us. And that's significant downward pressure on future valuations. The line doesn't always go up. For every Amazon, there's a WLIR-FM, which used to be a huge station in Long Island, was purchased in 2004 for $60 million, and it recently sold just a couple of years ago for $900,000. Now, the truth there, just as the truth with Spotify, lies somewhere in between, as with any investment. Now, my focus in this podcast and also in my newsletter and anywhere else that I participate in public fora is 100% on making the line go up and making it go up for everyone. Now, part of that is user growth, of course, and Spotify has actually been doing pretty well on that score. But the other component of gross margins is how profitable that audience is. And this is the great black box that I submit podcasting has yet to unlock. I have thoughts about this. And that's what I'm going to be talking about a lot, both here and in my newsletter, 
over the next several weeks. Anyway, a personal note. I'm on my way to New York today, and it's been a hot minute since I've taken the Acela, but thanks to my previous Biden level of Amtrak usage, I am still executive premium Pilgrim Blue Prestige Engineer ludicrous level. I shall be treated in a manner befitting the dignity of my station, which is Penn Station. And as I contemplate this trip and a spate of travel to come in the next few months to a couple of big uh, radio and podcasting conferences in May, I can't help but think that a year ago, I was in a different place. I was, well, I was home. I don't know about you. You probably were. Uh, But my mindset was also, I think, pretty different at that time. I have a lot of varied responsibilities at Edison Research, but by far my favorite of those was getting out into the world of humans and presenting insights at conferences, presentations to clients, and corporate events. Now, as a fairly introverted person, I thought I was going to be just fine with our new work from Zoom life, which I think most of us have, I'm not sure enjoyed is the right word. But it turns out I was wrong. I missed the events. I missed the people. And I missed presenting in live settings a whole lot more than I thought I would. Being an introvert doesn't mean that I don't like people or I can't talk to them. I have, in fact, accomplished both in my lifetime with some regularity. It just means that I I like to recharge my batteries alone, not in crowds. So after a day of presenting or conferencing, more likely to watch a movie in my room or have dinner with a handful of friends than I am to go to the conference party that night. But that doesn't change my love of speaking or my need to interact with other humans, no matter how exhausting they may be. Present company excluded, of course. But I do miss you, dear listeners. I miss talking to you and seeing your faces and not your Zoom faces. I went through a stretch last year where I I really started to question my value. If I'm not out there working with clients and presenting, then what am I even doing, bro? But of course, I was was doing a lot. We were all busy. But still, as for many of you, I'm sure, this all sparked a, a lengthy period of introspection. What am I even doing? Am I doing enough of the things that make me feel strong? Or am I doing a lot of things that are enervating? And if you had enervating on I Hear Things Bingo, congratulations. Well, my biggest decision was that I wanted to double down on digital audio, and I wanted to double down on podcasting in particular. And I also wanted to find more opportunities to connect with people that didn't necessarily revolve around a particular project, but as an advisor with a, with a much broader perspective. Now, I've worked on many different projects in every imaginable industry, but podcasting really remains my passion, and I hope that's been evident in the 16 years I've been working to help measure the space. And that, in turn, I think has helped countless industries and advertisers notice the space and become participants. And this is where my focus remains, and it's going to become even sharper. What I've worked for these many years is to help legitimize the space that I wanted to be in so that someday that space could support me, that it would in return be a place for me to ply my trade. And it's plying time, my friends. I want to continue to work to establish a podcast industry, a place where established networks and independent podcasters alike have fair access to information, fair access to revenue, and equal opportunity. I think there's some structural issues in podcasting. I think there's some information arbitrage as well. And I want to work on both of these issues. I want to help create the sandbox that I'd like to play in for years to come. So I made a difficult decision in the last month, very difficult. I decided that the best place for me to tackle this phase of my career was outside of Edison Research, my work home for the last 18 years. So I'm going to be stepping down at the end of May to start my next chapter. My work with Edison is really far from over, and I think we've established an agreement to partner on many other things in the future. The attention to getting things right, the clarity, and the moral compass of Larry, Joe, Rob, and Mel, the senior leadership there that I've worked with for so long, 
and the culture they've set with the rest of Edison, it's unparalleled in the podcast industry and in any industry. I'd say that I'm going to miss them, but I suspect I'm going to be in their hair for some years to come. So I'm excited about what's next, and I'll have more to say about that in the next edition of I Hear Things, which isn't going away, by the way, just as I'm going to double down on podcasting. I'm also going to be evolving I Hear Things, the newsletter and this podcast, into something very exciting, broad-reaching, and ultimately, I think, useful for podcasters of every stripe. My good friend and and co-author, Tim Hayden, is fond of quoting the philosopher that he calls Ransom Eli Olds. You will remember his wagons of speed. And so shall I. It's time to turn some pages and roll with the changes. There's still going to be stats and jokes. And if you subscribe to the newsletter, gratuitous pictures of Walnut, my dog. By the way, you can support Walnut with treats and, well, this podcast at buymeacoffee.com slash Tom Webster. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of I Hear Things. I'll be back in a couple of weeks. Thanks for listening. I'll see you soon.